Hey, Jared here from soundguitarlessons.com with a quick video for you that is part three of this little series that I've been doing called Finding Fulfillment, Joy, and Meaning in Music. This is very important for us to put a little effort into so we don't hit what I call the wall of meaninglessness. The wall of meaninglessness is when you're practicing and you're practicing and you're practicing and you want to get better, but you start to wonder why and you start to wonder what the point of it is and you're trying hard and you lose sight of your purpose behind the whole endeavor. The two videos before this went into the importance of that quite thoroughly. Check out the whole series of these three videos so far, and I'll probably add to it in the future. There's a link in the description to this series. In this video, I want to talk about something that is very, very tangible that will help immensely with us avoiding this wall of meaninglessness. So the first thing I wanna share is actually a video short like a little one minute vertical video clip that I shared um, on various platforms um, a little bit ago. I've been experimenting with that format, though I usually like this deeper, longer video format. So I posted a video about the wall of meaninglessness with a story about a student that I was teaching. And I saw this happen with students that I was teaching over the years many, many, many times. But one student in particular really hit it hard, really hit that wall hard. So instead of retelling that story, let me just show you that one minute video clip and then I'll come back and we're gonna go into something very tangible for you so we can all work on how to have a sense of purpose behind our practicing. So here's that video clip. So I had a student who was practicing a lot every day and really he sounded fantastic. Like so many people would love to sound the way that this student sounded and he would practice and practice and practice and practice. And he eventually hit a wall of meaninglessness. Just that feeling of what's the point? Why am I doing this at all? What he didn't have was an outlet, an end point to a practicing project where you get to share and express yourself and feel like you have closed the door on a chapter of something that you're working on. This is extremely important if you're practicing anything to have some sort of outlet, some sort of light at the end of the tunnel that you're practicing towards. This can be anything, a little recording for yourself, sharing it with someone in your family, uh, posting it online, a performance, a recital, something like this, very important, or you'll hit the wall of meaninglessness. So your homework assignment is to make sure you have an outlet. Now, in my last video, I talked about having an emotional outlet, that this is a wonderful reason for us on a deeper level to be showing up to play music, and this can help us uh, power through those difficult times of practicing and, and feel like we do have meaning behind it to be able to express ourselves emotionally an outlet for that. This is different. I'm talking about a musical outlet. I'm talking about a project outlet, somewhere where what you're working on actually goes towards something. This is why students very typically have recitals. This is the same thing as any kind of organized project you join, any class you take, any group you become involved in. There's projects, right? There's some sort of deadline. There's some sort of thing you're working towards. There's some sort of performance at the end, or there's some sort of, you know, you're prepping the float for the parade. I don't, I don't know, whatever it is, you're, you know, building a garden and then you want to see the fruits of your labor. We want to see the fruits of our labor and we want to see it as a cycle. So you need to have a project. We all need to have a project at any given time where our practicing energy can go towards. And the ultimate goal, I think, is that this is a fulfilling cycle that repeats over and over and over and over and over. So we can think of all kinds of simple examples, like an author writing a book. What does an author who, you know, let's just say it's an author, their purpose is writing. They love it so much. They love the whole process. They finish a book. What do they do? they start another book, right? What does a band do after releasing an album? Yes, all kinds of things, touring and stuff like that, but at some point they're gonna release another album, right? So what, what are we doing? What are you doing to have the project cycle? It can be anything, but it has to be something. 
What is it going to be? And it can change all the time. It can change, but you have to have a place for your energy to go, or you will hit the very, very, very depressing wall of meaninglessness. Let's look at a few things that can work as outlets. Okay. And if you think of more than this, let us know, write it in the comments, tell us what one out of this list you reson that resonates with you and or what other what things work for you. This is just a random list, all things that work. It can be anything. For example, taking lessons is actually a pretty good outlet, because you have something to practice towards, and then show your progress to someone who gives you feedback. And it's a cycle, right? Well, <laughs> how does that explain my student? He was I was teaching him for a long time. It was maybe five years in, six years in, and he sounded really good. So we hit a wall together as far as, you know, me guiding him further and him like, what do I do next? Right? Really probably should have been performing. But for a lot of us, that's a, that's maybe something we're intimidated by. It doesn't have to be performing. And also if we are intimidated by it, maybe we should do it because of that. Watch my last video from this series to learn more about that. The challenge, the fear, the stress, the positive stress, the you stress. Okay. Recording for your own archive. This one is extremely challenging simply because of the accountability factor. Who's holding us accountable to record something for ourselves? And when I say record, it really can be a DIY video voice memo style on your phone, or of course, something more elaborate if you want to. But you don't ever have to show it to someone. But if, if you do do this, if you record for yourself, even just on your phone, and you get, you get something down where you feel like, yes, I got it to this point where I'm proud to have this as a little pile in my back pocket of things I got to, got to, you know, performance level recorded it, that, that can absolutely work as a project cycle as an outlet. It's just that most of us won't do it because no one else is <laughs> involved. If you can do that, please go for it. Um, but you might as well take it to the next level. If you do that, which is sending it to someone, texting, emailing someone, friend, family, anyone. Okay. My partner's mother just sent me she retired recently and she's obsessed with practicing piano and it's awesome. And she just sent me a recording of some of a piece that she just has been working on and it sounded really good. And it was, it felt so good for me to hear it. And she seemed to be very excited to share it and, you know, was really tangibly making progress. And at this point of, you know, ready and wanting to share it with people, I've encouraged students to do this so much. And I know the resistance is there as <laughs> often either because we don't like how we sound or we don't want to be imposing, uh, you know, on people or whatever, but find someone who's in your circle, who you trust that, you can send something to, right? Have it be an accountability club. Maybe they have something they can send to you and you just know you have this deal with each other. And it's not about being told that it's good. It's not about being, um, you know, getting any sort of particular reaction. It's literally just somewhere for you to put it. So when you're practicing, you can know that it's going to get recorded somehow. And, and I just mean simple recording, not some studio recording, and you're going to share it with someone. And then you can start over again with something else or often that process shows us where our limitations are in a way that we never would have known just practicing on our own. So then we can work on the same piece of music and get it better and then share it again, right? So sharing, it's just an option. You can find what works for you. Recitals. I already talked about if someone's taking a class or formal lessons, often recitals are part of it, or it's all, you know, part of music school. They're always doing recitals. The next one is teaching. Teaching is an awesome outlet. This I know from experience teaching is, has been my outlet for many phases of my life and teach right now. I have a combination of a couple things on this list. The next item posting on social media or YouTube. For me, it's a combination of those two things for the last few years. My outlet has been my YouTube channel and practicing for lessons that I'm going to teach. And I still play for friends. I do send music to people. I, I record things all the time. I'm always like writing song ideas. I still play some gigs, but like my consistent accountability uh, commitment has been a weekly lesson video. And it's super fun to be like, what am I going to teach? I better practice for it. This gets me into this topic, gives me somewhere to put it. When it's done, I feel like there's a door closed. I can move on to something else. So 
that premise is all we're looking for. Get towards something, finish it, close the door, move on to something else or go deeper into that, right? But having these milestones, milestones, if you're practicing without milestones that are tangible and connected to the outside world, AKA an outlet, you're going to hit the wall of meaninglessness. And it is a horrible feeling. It's really a horrible feeling questioning. Should I even be playing music at all? Why did I buy this guitar? Maybe I should sell it. What's the point? What's the point? What's the point? It's scary. It's a scary place to be. And what I'm trying to encourage us to do here is have an outlet, which is going to prevent that. An obvious one in the middle of the list here is releasing music, like actually releasing it. Okay, pretty terrifying for most of us who aren't trying to be professional musicians, but of course it's an option, so it has to be on the list. Uh, gigs, any kind of gigs, background music, whatever. These are just obvious things. If you have somewhere to go to play, I should have said jamming with friends. Jamming with friends is a great one that's not on the list, right? Shows, I say also, because a show is a little more like I'm putting on a show of my own music or covers and I want you to listen. Gigs can be more like background music, whatever. But obviously, I'm just giving us brainstorming ideas, right? SoundCloud, SoundCloud or Bandcamp are not the same as like Spotify. It's Those are just free platforms that you can upload your music. You, you can share them easily that way. They can be very lo-fi, low quality, and it's not, it's not the same as a, a real music release. But they're places you can put your music and then have links to them or even just have a portfolio for yourself even if you never show it to someone else it does feel good to kind of put them somewhere obviously open mics on the list busking just playing you know out somewhere some of these i know some of us are going to look at and say oh i could never do that or i'm not ready for that but maybe one of these maybe two of these you are ready for right and the last one is just performing for family right maybe regularly when you finish something maybe special occasions which is a little scary or more formal feeling maybe just for your kids maybe just for your parents maybe just i talked about in my last video how i went and played guitar for my grandmother and um it's an outlet stuff like that is an outlet okay so i can't emphasize this enough that's what this whole video is about do you have an outlet now if so what is it let us know in the comments we need to encourage each other and if not which is very common. So don't feel bad if you don't have one. What is it going to be? Commit to it now. What is your outlet going to be? What will you try? And if that doesn't work, try something else. And if that doesn't work, try something else. This will guide your practicing in the most beautiful way. You will excel at music if you have an outlet. You will feel alive. You will feel scared, which is a feeling of feeling alive. And you will feel fulfilled by being scared by powering through that, getting to the other side, feeling fulfilled by it, feeling excited by it, starting the whole cycle over again. If you don't have an outlet, let us know what you're going to try next. If you do have one, share with us what it is so we can encourage each other and we're all in this together. If you don't have my chord chart called Chords with Color, it's a really cool resource. I always give something away at the end of my lessons. It's a PDF chord chart that is super unique free download in the description. There's a link down there, or you can go to soundguitarlessons.com slash chords with color, just a bunch of beautiful chords. Use it to write songs with, use it to just practice hearing uh, various sounds with or your technique or whatever you want, especially after you feel connected to why you are practicing, which is what this whole series is about. If you haven't seen the other two videos in this series, it really drives home more of this. If you feel like this is medicine for you that you needed, so you're not just practicing mechanical things without a purpose, check out the other videos. There's a link in the description to the whole series, and I'll put a link to it on the screen here at the end of the video if you're watching on YouTube. I post a new lesson video every Tuesday. I hope to see you in the next one. Thanks so much for watching. Take care and happy outlet finding.